Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome back to Groundhog Day. Welcome back to the same thing 164 times, Blue Jays fans. Every single game is the exact same, except this time. Except this time, John Schneider and the people around John Schneider decided to throw in a little wrinkle of something different and just completely botch the pitching today against the Minnesota Twins. This is the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, your last time here, I appreciate that you are here right now watching or listening to this podcast. The Toronto Blue Jays have lost to the Minnesota Twins in two straight games to be officially eliminated from the MLB playoffs. They lost today 2 nothing, and in Toronto Blue Jays fashion, the offense was non existent it did not exist in this entire series especially today but we're starting at the very top of the list of egregious errors by the blue jays and the blue jays management and the blue jays entire department of analytics who decided going into this game you say kikuchi needed to get in there no matter how good jose barrios was pitching today it's the fourth inning. And of course it was Royce Lewis. Of course it was Royce Lewis at the plate because who else would it be? It's only been Royce Lewis this entire series. All it took for the Twins to win this entire series was Royce Lewis getting walked by Barrios. And then in game number one, Royce Lewis driving in all the runs. That's all it took for them to win. Back to the main plot. John Schneider. After Royce Lewis walks, after Barrios is having a fabulous game, his stuff looked great. We get that he was pitching well. But not only was he pitching well, the stuff was phenomenal. He was hitting corners. He was getting guys swinging and missing. Barrios was fabulous. And John Schneider walks out to the mound and he says, you know what? the analytics department that's run by Ross Atkins at the top and everybody else below him and the entire staff in that dugout said, Yusei Kikuchi needs to get in here so we can have the Minnesota Twins change up their lineups and have to make decisions and they're going to have to turn all their right-handed batters to the left and the left-handed batters are going to go to the right and the analytics say that we're going to get a better chance of winning this ball game if we take out a pitcher who is pitching phenomenally. And he walked one batter, and that was it. What an awful decision. The layers behind this decision are important. Because if you follow along with any of the conversation that's been going on, there's a lot of contention about John Schneider and if he's the one making these decisions. Because what it comes down to is, it is not a singular person who makes pitching changes. One guy has to walk out to the mound and say, hello, I have to make this pitching change here, umpire, and then the new guy comes in. But the way the Jays work is there's an entire analytic department. There's an entire pitching staff. There's a general manager named Ross Atkins who has directed all of these people in charge to make these decisions before the game, and then during the game, they follow that path. John Schneider is not but a simple soldier who is handed a card and told, hey, go out there and do these things and we will win the war. And he does not have the ability, it seems, all of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say allegedly, it does not seem he has the ability to overwrite any of these decisions. Because whoever is telling him that he needs to take out a pitcher who's pitching great, he doesn't have the ability to tell that person no. And that's kind of the crux of the issue here, is the way the Jays are run. John Schneider doesn't have autonomy. He has to make the decisions that he's told to make. And I assume that he agrees with them as well, which is also bad. If John Schneider didn't agree with this, I think we would see a little bit more pushback. Maybe we'll see it in postgame. I'm recording this while postgame stuff is happening, so I'm sorry I don't have the postgame quotes right now while I'm recording. Maybe by the time I get to the questions part, we'll get to the we'll get I'll get some of the postgame quotes in there. But right now, 
there's been no pushback from John Schneider regarding these decisions, which we so we can only assume that he is on board. And if he is on board with these decisions, he has to go along with the people who are making these decisions. John Schneider, Ross Atkins, the analytics staff, this mysterious book of people who read a lot of books and and crunch a lot of numbers and say, hey, take out great pitchers when they're pitching great. They need to go. And this offseason needs to be a change for the Toronto Blue Jays, not only in humans who work there, but in philosophy. There needs to be leeway for context. There needs to be leeway for situations. We could all see, everybody sitting there could see, hey, don't take out the pitcher who's on fire. Royce Lewis is on first. It's okay. Let's see what we got with Barrios. Haven't even gotten to the part where, yes, taking out Barrios, putting in Yusei Kikuchi, led directly to runs. Two runs and two runs. T-O-O, T-O, two runs, and T-W-O runs. Two runs came in in that one inning, and that was all it took to defeat the Toronto Blue Jays. And the second the second part of this game, I usually do, if you haven't watched these before, like I usually, or listened to this before, I usually do a full breakdown of the game, but there's such peaks with this game. We just need to focus on three things. That's number one. Number two, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. What are you doing? What have you been doing all season long? One, this team is awful on the base pass. We saw it in, in the first game with Bo Bichette. Bobachet thought he could blow past the stop sign. And yes, it took an amazing play by Carrera, but this is what this team is. They are a bad fundamental team. They can't do the basic fundamentals of, of baseball, and that includes base running. Vladdy, Bobachet is at the plate. There is a runner on third base. You are not paying attention to the game. You are lazily trying to cheat your way down that base path to try and get home just in case Bichette gets a hit. And Carrera sneaks in behind you. He gets the tip off from the pitcher and they pick you off because you're not paying attention. And Vladdy, ladies and gentlemen, Blue Jays fans, I think you'll agree with me. Vladdy hasn't had his head in the game all season long. This isn't new. This isn't a new thing by Vladdy. Vladdy hasn't been paying attention. And I don't know what it is, but the hustle, the fundamentals, the spirit he played with, it was lost this season. And I'm going to guess it has to do a lot with his hitting falling off dramatically along with every other hitter on the Toronto Blue Jays. And when he's not going, when he's not hitting, you notice these other parts of the game where he struggles. If we're not getting all of the big power hitting out of Vladdy, it's, it's hard to look at him and say, hey, you're worth a ton of money. You're a superstar in this team, and we desperately need you. It's hard to say those things when you don't get the power out of Vladdy because the little things, the little things around baseball – he hasn't been doing it well all season long. I, I like one of the, one of my least favorite moments from this entire Blue Jay season was Vladdy pimping a double. It was such a hot button moment for me watching him pimp a double. He thought he hit a home run. He's just just jogging over to first, and he beats it out to eventually get a double when the ball hits off the wall and. I, I, I won't forget that moment from this season because it felt like that was Vladdy in a nutshell. And then we get to game 164 and the most, the second most egregious thing that happened in this game outside of Schneider walking to the mound is Vladdy getting picked off at second. And you're saying, yeah, you are who we thought you were, Vladdy. You got to pay attention. He's, he's young. Like, David Snyder's a, a project in the making, and he's young, and he's a rookie, and he's doing all this. Vladdy's younger than him. 
And so we have a lot of runway here with Vladdy, but he's been in the league for so long that he has to be more mature than this. You got to figure out how to keep a helmet on your head when you're running down to first base. You got to figure out how to pay attention when you're on second base to not get picked off in the middle of a playoff game when you're the tying run and your best hitter is at home plate. It is inexcusable. It is unforgivable. And I hope it's a long off season for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And the last thing, I, those are two things. And I got one more to talk about from this game. And that is... If the Jays could get three runs, three runs today, none of this would matter. That is the most upsetting part of this entire endeavor. All of these months, these 164 games were the exact same. Taking out Barrios. For Yusei Kikuchi, doesn't matter if the Jays can hit the ball at all. If they have any type of offense, it doesn't matter. And that has been the one story all season long. The Minnesota Twins scored five runs. If I told you there'd be five runs scored total by the Twins in two games, And all the Jays got to do is put up four in the first game, three in the second game. They'd be in such a perfect position to be on the complete opposite end of this and win this series in two games. The pitching staff held their own. That's what sucks about this whole thing. If anybody in the lineup can hit, it'd be done. This team would be in contention for the World Series. They'd be walking up to the ALDS easily. Oh, my God. We've been sitting here and said they can beat anybody in the American League because the pitching staff is so good. And there's no hitting whatsoever throughout the top and the bottom of the lineup. Nobody can get an extra base hit. And it's not even hyperbole. They had one all series. One extra base hit in two games, in two playoff games. It was pathetic, and it's been pathetic for 164 games, and that is problem number one, two, three, five, and 10 in 100 for the Blue Jays this offseason. How do you get this team to hit a baseball? The offense this series officially had 15 hits all series. That's it. One extra base hit out of those 15. I think it's uh, 15 for 65. No, 66. 15 for 66. If, if my math is correct, I'm trying to add up all the bat, at-bats today to, this, uh, to the screenshot I had. And yeah, one run. That's, that's what it comes down to. And I'm repeating the same stuff I said at the end of August. I said throughout September. And I said yesterday. Yesterday's title of the podcast is they can't hit. They scored zero runs today. What do I come here and say? They can't hit again? They can't hit electric boogaloo part two? Oh, like, that's it. That's what it comes down to is they needed three runs and nothing is a problem. Vladdy, you can solve every problem you've ever had in your entire life getting picked off at second base just by hitting a home run, just by hitting a double. It, that's so simple. There's no offense on this entire team, and that's why they lost. The pitching, the pitching deserved more. Every single pitcher on this roster deserves so much more. It was truly the same game 164 times. Phenomenal pitching. The starting pitcher comes in, has a great five, six, seven innings. Bullpen comes in, shuts him down. Romano in there does his thing. The offense, non-existent. Solid defense, too. Underrated part of the whole whole season for the Jays. Solid defense. Had no complaints about anybody on the defense. Maybe a little bit, but like 
Overall, great. Base running, egregious. Defense, all right. Pitching, phenomenal. Best in the major league. Some of the best in the major league. Offense, minor league. Little league. T-ball. T-ball offense. And that's it. That's the season. That's the Blue Jays. Season over. Catch them next year in April. But before we actually sign off on the Jays this year, let's get to some of your questions and reactions. I asked for that on Twitter. Let's see what you had to say. Let's start with Chu Attridge, who says, one run in 18 innings. There's nothing else to say. Elite pitching, broken offense. Can't agree more. M. Pierce 6 says, no questions necessary. They are who we thought they were. Not untrue. John W. Carvalho says, 131 million for 47 pitches of shutout ball only to pull him. Nobody's happy. Ben says, third time getting swept in four years, haven't won a playoff game in seven years, haven't been to or won a World Series in 30 years. The Leafs and Argos were the only teams from Toronto to win a playoff game slash series this year. That's all I have to say. Um, yeah, because the Raptors lost in the play-in, so that's not untrue. Um, the, the thing Ben brings up that I forgot to touch on during uh, the beginning portions of this pod is that haven't won a playoff game in seven years thing. If we're not on Ross Atkins, and I like, I'm not really including Mark Shapiro in this conversation about people who need to go because Mark Shapiro is more of a conduit from ownership to the ball club. You know, he he's just kind of the overseer of the whole operation. He's not making the baseball decisions that falls on to Ross Atkins. Ro- Shapiro's more on like. Hey, I love the Rogers Center upgrades. Thumbs up on those. Like, great job, Marsha Pyro. He's the one who needs to make the decision now to fire Ross Atkins. That's who I'm backing to get rid of everybody, Ross Atkins and below. And the seven years without a playoff win thing is so important. They were around Atkins and Shapiro in 2016. That's not necessarily their ball club, but it is their ball club because... They came in the 2015 offseason, and they built, built that 2016 team that did go on a little bit of a run and then ended up losing in the ALCS. But since then, since that playoff run in 2016, the Blue Jays have been swept three times, three times in the playoffs. That is unforgivable for a management regime that was given the task of winning. Their job was to turn these Jays into contenders and World Series contenders. They're not in charge of a rebuild. That's what's so upsetting. Atkins' Atkins's job isn't to rebuild this team. It's been enough time, and you've won nothing in seven years. What do you want me to do? That's your resume. Nothing. So you're done. Last couple questions here. Uh, 1994 at Andrew T says, no, any telecommunications, telecommunications providers. Uh, I know a couple. There's two big ones here. Uh, Devin Birch says, remember when Atkins said we didn't need a bat at the trade deadline because the bats were going to show up? Not correct, Mr. Atkins. Uh, John Sal says, have the Blue Jays inexplicably officially morphed into the Leafs? The Blue Jays. I didn't touch on this either, but last year, the way it ended was 8-1 lead to the Seattle Mariners. They blew it. They blew an 8-1 lead. And then now this year, they get swept in two games to the Twins after they didn't show up. It's weird how awful Toronto sports are collectively together as a core. They find the ways to lose in the most magically awful ways. I feel like other cities have this problem too, other non-winning championship cities, but we do have one. We got the 2019 Raptors. Kawhi was a magical being that came down from the sky and blessed this city with a championship. So that was only four years ago. We have something fairly recently-ish. I'm not too over Toronto sports, but it has certainly been an era in Toronto sports where every loss seems to be the most historic way to lose. And that's where I'm going to leave this. I'll be back uh, Sunday. I think the two pods this week will cover 
the pod that should have dropped tomorrow on my regular Thursday night, Sunday night schedule. But I'll be back on Sunday, which is Thanksgiving Sunday. So maybe I re- might record Monday morning. We'll see. You'll get a pod Monday or Sunday. I'll be back. This has been the Jesse Blake Sports Report. <sighs> we'll have tons of Blue Jays offseason content. They got a lot, a couple of the big decisions to make this offseason. Looking at the free agent list, it's going to be Hunjin Ryu, Matt Chapman, Brandon Belt, Kevin Kiermeyer, Jordan Hicks. Those are the big names that they got to make some decisions on. We'll keep an eye on that and how this goes. And yeah, if Josh Schneider gets fired in the next couple of days, I'm going to be back that for that too. So this has been the Jesse Blake Sports Report. It has been one hell of a Toronto Blue Jays season. Welcome to the off season. I don't, I don't even know how to end this. It's, it's Don't pull your starting pitcher when he's pitching really, really great. Just don't do that. Just don't. Also, get a hit. Get any kind of offense. That's it. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be watching this or listening to this right now, and I appreciate you. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.